Welcome to Preach Can't Preach with Rashad, man. Here once again, another episode, another sermon, man. How's it going? What's good, man? Everything's slow motion, bro. Everything's good. Yeah, man. You know, if it's time, exciting time. Football's back. Madden came out. Hall of Fame game, Atlanta versus Broncos. Got the Hall of Fame ceremony to come up this weekend. You know, it's, it's finally, we finally got to that little lull of the season where it was nothing, nothing, uh, the basketball kind of died down and, and training camp just started on the way. Um, so speaking of basketball, man, um, I know you heard and saw the, the first take interview with Stephen A. and Melo, and, you know, Melo went through his things about what happened with him in the Houston Rockets, um, how he feel like, you know, he should be in the NBA and on the team right now, and even throughout his struggles of, you know, the Knicks and how he should have been with the LeBron and Wade. So, uh, what was your reaction to everything? Uh Definitely a good interview, good piece of work by Stephen A. Smith and ESPN. Um, as far as my take on Melo and everything, um, I think people have to look at it through a through a like through the lens of what was going on at the time. They can't look at it from a hindsight point of view because hindsight is always going to be twenty twenty. You can always see different dominoes and different things that affect this certain situation. So. Of course, you know, people going to say, oh, he should have did this, should have did that. But you got to put yourself in that time space of when everything was actually happening. So, like, 2003 draft, people say, oh, the Pistons should have took him or uh, that that, that would have changed his career and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it would have changed his career, but it would have changed everything else that happened during that time as well. Like, it's like you can't just change one independent factor and then keep everything else the same. So, I mean, back at that time, they made the Pistons made the O three East Finals and things like that. And then when the draft came up, they ended up taking Darko with the second pick, and Melo went the third pick to Denver. But at the time, they needed a big, and Darko had that dirt, that dirt level potential. Who what people thought, you know, he was a raw eighteen year old prospect, and uh, people just thought, hey, we can this guy can turn into something special. So when you see a raw project like that it's kind of hard to pass that up. So uh, I think people feel like the Pistons kind of alter his legacy, but there's no guarantee that they still win that 4 title or make those six straight Eastern Conference Finals if they have Melo because I, Rasheed was really the missing piece and all that. They needed a big. So if anything, they should have probably drafted Chris Cayman or Chris Bosh. But uh, I think Melo came across very professional. Uh, he's always been professional. I don't think he wants people to feel sorry for him. It's just about hearing his perspective of everything that actually went on. Because Melo, he's always been a, a quiet guy. I mean, he's never really just ran to the media to always clear things up. He just he always just got his money, played ball, and stayed Melo pretty much. But I think the interview was uh, well done, and long overdue. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we can't really control of what because. You know the Pistons thing. That's something we that he couldn't control. Um, but yeah, obviously it would have made a difference. Now I think I will say this: if it was the modern day of what we know now, uh, not not even not even the hindsight thing, um, they would have drafted Melo. And the reason why I said that is because the small ball era. You know when we entered that, they would have it would have had two stretch wings and Melo and Prince, who both six nine and both you know at the you know Melo Melo was a terrible defender. He was an okay defender, but you got Tayshawn Prince. Having that and Ben Wall- having the Ben Wallace guy behind you, kind of like the Rockets are now with Peter Tucker and Eric Gordon Hardy, and it's kind of kind of would have been the same feel. Um, it's like I said, at that time, it's always too big. It was two bigs, and you had to have your guard, and you had to have your your two your two and three kind of interchangeable. That was really how the teams were built. So, yeah, it probably would have probably in hindsight, it really might, it probably would have been more Chris Bosh than than Carmelo, but. Um, yeah, I, you know, my thing is the whole time about Camelo is really, you know, his decision about, you know, taking the money. And I understand you know, cash out when you can. I, I get that. I understand about that. Um, but like I said, it, we talked about it before. 
Uh, you know, Wade had won a championship in 06, you know, and then 07, LeBron went to the finals. And, you know, 08, he probably was, you know, 1A, 1B, probably with Kobe as probably the best player in the game. And if y'all had talked about it, you know, you know, you know Denver, Denver did pretty good. Melo wasn't like it's not like he was missing playoffs in Denver. Um, really desperate because he if he felt like he was close, uh, which every team did at that time in the West. Uh, so I understand why he probably took the money. But if it was discussed about you know teaming up, uh, you know, let, hey, let's you know let's try to you know get our countries at the same time. I think he should have been more smart in that in that sense because. Yes, you could have got the max deal, but I mean a three year deal still would have, you know, it's not like after that three year deal, Melo wouldn't get no you know, he wouldn't get no money. Even even if it fell through, like let's say let's say LeBron and Wade, like, oh, we are not gonna do it, blah, blah. Uh I feel like Melo, even that, he still would have got his money, you know. Um, because he would have you know, he would have been phrasing again and of course Denver wouldn't let him go, or he would have walked just walked to the Knicks, which obviously would have been a better option uh, at that at that time. Uh, I just feel like he he went things differently, and 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 I w- I bet if he could do it over again, I think he would. Uh, I think he would change his ways. Now, whether he would have went to the Heat with them, you know, that's maybe a different story. I, I feel like Melo always wanted to be the guy on the team, um, and I you know wait at that time Wade knew that he LeBron was the guy, and you know Melo's whole career, you know him, him and LeBron since since high school they was mano a mano, so. I can understand why Melo probably didn't want to go with LeBron, and it makes sense. Um, but, you know, like I said, he probably would have redone this, as far as the Nuggets, different thing um, with, you know, with the trade with the Knicks, probably maybe walk, you know, just walk instead or try not to gut the team as much. You know, it, it's a lot of things he could have done differently, um, especially to try to win the championship because um, that's really all he needed to, I guess, submit, you know, what Carmelo Anthony is because most of his success, you know, is all USA and, and of course, winning the national title. Um, but you know, Melo, Melo's like you said, long overdue. And I'm glad he got got to say his own mind. Uh, I don't think he would over. You know, I don't think he would really do anything. Um, I don't think he overstayed his welcome at any place or anything like that. It's just all about, like I said, just looking at the the timing of everything. They all came out the same draft, and of course, you know, the guys played their rookie contracts, all that kind of stuff. Um, but Melo ended up taking. A five-year extension, and those guys took three-year extensions. Um, so that you know, I can't really criticize him for doing that because at the time he's 21, 22 years old. You're entering your prime. Um, Dwayne Wade had just won his first championship with, with, alongside Shaq, and then LeBron would go on to make the 2007 NBA Finals. So, I mean, I know he stayed at him, D Wade. And Bron had been talking about playing together since they really were, you know, 18, 19 since they came into the league. But at the same time, like, those conversations are just conversations. You know, it's just an idea until you actually see it done. And even when they were talking about that kind of stuff, you know, as far as, like, extension-wise, that was still three, four years in advance. I mean, that was going into the 2006, 2007 season, I believe. So, you know, you still have to – Look out for yourself because if you get hurt or anything like that, those guys not taking care of your family for you. So that was really his first big deal. And I mean, you want to you get a five year, eighty million dollar deal um, just from a mindset of security. Um, Twenty two years old, probably, I think at, at that time, and and Melo, you know, at the time he had made the playoffs already more more than either one of them except D Wade, who had just won a championship because LeBron was just making his first playoff his third year. So, you know, Melo was entering his prime pretty much, and he already had his mind. Like, I like Denver. We're we're not winning on a high level, but we're starting to get to that level, things like that. He didn't want to leave Denver. And like I said, at the time, those were just conversations. He couldn't plan his future off just conversations. And neither could those guys because if, I'm sure if the LeBron had started getting some free agents to come to Cleveland, he went to left Cleveland. He really left because he wasn't winning titles there, and people wanted to come there. Um, and D. Wade was lucky enough to get Shaq there his second year, but won a title the third year. So you got to look at those uh, those different dominoes as well. And then as far as like the New York thing, um, I I will criticize him for forcing his way to New York. I think he should just play the contract out and then just walk to New York instead. 
because then he got a roster for Gallinari and Wilson Chandler, all those guys. Um, so he really didn't have much to play with once he got there. Outside of Amari, who started to get banged up and things like that. And then, of course, you know, they started to change coaches. He had a good year under Mike Wilson, but they started to change coaches with bringing in Mike D'Antoni and the whole Jeremy Lynn thing, just things like that. So, uh, Derek Fisher. But um, I think I can't really criticize him for any moves he made. Um, I know he was rumored to go to the Bulls at one point, and he considered that. In hindsight, you think maybe he should have went and played with the Bulls and D-Rose and those guys, but you got to look at, like you said, the information just being fed to him for us. If this guy's not going to be here, this guy's not going to be here, you might well just stay in a place you feel like you're home, and that's New York. That's what he did. It seems selfish to take all the money and all that kind of stuff, but when you look at it through the certain lens of what was going on during that time and securing your money for certain things, I really can't fault him too much. I believe in staying flexible, but at the same time, just looking at the lens of what's going on, then it wasn't like it is now when guys are comfortable taking a two-year deal and you know, play ops and all that kind of stuff. It, most times during that era, it was I'm signing three, four-year deals no matter what. Yeah, but you said you, you said it right then, and, and it's about he he always been about the money, um, and I, I I don't really think he. You know, I, I feel like he, he thought winning was, you know, second nature to him because, um, you know, Oak Hill always won. And as a freshman, like, well, I, at that time, was he the, like, the only freshman to ever win? I mean, maybe Akeem Elijah won or something. I, I can't really think of that far. But he, I know he was one of, the, one of the only freshmen to lead a team to a championship. So it's kind of like second nature to him. And, you know, especially, got, like I said, got to Denver. as a rookie, won, and got the playoffs. And, you know, like I said, more than LeBron did and, so like that, so maybe maybe he thought it was just natural, and then it, it and it, and it wasn't, and he was all about the money after that, securing the bag, and and I think he put too much too much uh, percentage in, in his values, um, you know, because it's yes yes it's about the money and securing for your family, but it's also you know your job and your job is to be the best, and you know that comes with you know winning championships or even getting to the championship, um, you know, and and. I, I know he's going to he's going to regret that part, um, and that's you know not ever getting to the finals, not ever not ever being to be on that big time stage. That that is something I know he will regret. Um, it, but like I said, it's it's a it's a it's a different situation. It's, it's kind of peculiar, especially how the Rockets went because you 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 could say right now if he was on the Rockets, they they probably needed him. Um, you know, in those series against the Warriors, um, and that would have been that would have, especially the the year because wasn't he on the Rockets the year Chris Paul was hurt? Uh, no, he was on OKC. OKC, okay. Well, let's see, so he's on, he's on Rockets this year, this past season. Yeah, okay. for just for ten games though. So you, you would you would think when well, Chris Paul is, is is hurt this season and and going in and out, you got you relying on Eric Gordon as your second best player, which he did a phenomenal job. I'm not gonna say he he didn't do it, but you know, if you had Melo in that mix, like, you know, Harden would have to kill himself. And, you know, even even if Melo, even if you told Melo to take it easy throughout the whole whole season and come back strong for the playoffs, you know, you needed him. Um, and that would have been his chance to finally make the finals. Um, so, it, it, and then even OKC, he had a chance to try to help a team get to the finals. So, uh, it's not like he, you know, the past few past few gigs, he wasn't in a good spot. In a spot, it just, you know, it just, I don't think he – I don't think he can be a be a uh, third or four piece to the puzzle. I feel like he got to be the one or two guy, um, and that's just how I always felt about Melo. And and Melo one of my one of my favorite players I had to to watch. So it's not like I'm criticizing somebody I hate. Um, so, but anyway, it's a sad situation. I don't believe the. Um, do you believe any team gonna give him a chance? Because I don't see I don't see a team give him a chance just because I don't think he's gonna take that bench role, which he should. Um, he should take that role, uh, um, especially like a like a Sixers or a Buck team, um, you know, anybody like that, or any team where he can, you know, he can play get twenty minutes and and you know whether he get twenty points this game or whether he get ten, he should be okay because he's in the NBA and he's playing for a championship. Uh, so you think you think he will be playing this season or not? Yeah, I think he'll ultimately get a job because just how the NBA is with attrition, trades, injuries things like that, he will land a job, and he deserves a job. The only reason he doesn't really have one is because his name is Carmelo Anthony, and just his stature of where he was and how his name has kind of been dragged through the mud in recent years because of market situation, like when 
the Knicks were going were starting to be bad, things like that. That wasn't all Melo's fault. That was some of uh, the GM's fault for blowing the team up, things like that. So, like, just from being on the Knicks and his name is right through the mud because he's the marquee name on a big market team, and then you go to OKC, you think it's going to be a potential Western Conference contender. They get bounced the first round, and then you go to Houston, and now you're, you know, 10 games and you're deactivated. And nobody even gave him a look. I think ultimately he will get a look. I mean, what's the difference between Melo and Lou Will? Like, Melo can be the spark off your bench as a second unit. I mean, Lou Will does. I mean, Melo can still get you 15 to 20 off the bench. Lou Will gets you about 15 to 20 off the bench. And Melo's just a bigger guy who likes to post up. Lou Will can handle the ball more. But, I mean, there are backup point guards in the league. Just put Melo on the second unit with a decent point guard. And, you got a, a strong second unit. Um, the teams who probably could use them would be maybe a Philly who needs some floor space and some scoring. Um, Detroit, I mean, that'll be kind of be um, a good move for them because they don't really don't have a lot. Just Drummond, Blake, um, hope for something big from Kennard. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a few teams who can use Miller. Like you were saying, I know I can crack a nine, ten man rotation. So I think he. You know, he could definitely be on a roster probably by Christmas Day or at least the trade deadline. Somebody's going to pick him up for a playoff push, I believe. And, I mean, even just just looking at Melo's career, I mean, we can say, oh, he didn't ever made a finals. But you got to look at during that era, man, and all those early years he was in Denver. I mean, how's he ever going to get that to the finals? Because his rookie year, that was Shaq and Kobe's last year. Then after that, the Spurs were in two finals, 05 and 07. You had the Phoenix Suns running gun with Antonio. They were winning 55, 60 games a couple of years. Dirt's Mavs, uh, Ray Allen, Sonics were in the, you know, out there in the West. Uh, and, I mean, even some of those years, it, it's not like he was the eight seed running in the playoffs that he was trash. It was some years, like, they would win 49, 50 games and be the six, seven seed. And the team above them got 52, 53 wins. So it's not like a huge gap separating the seed. It's just – you got to deal with the seeding you got. And, unfortunately, he was getting bounced in the first round. Like, I'm not a mellow apologist or anything like that. I do believe in looking at his career from a from a fair standpoint. I criticize him for not for taking the money, things like that. I criticize Melo for not staying flexible when he could have stayed flexible. And then I also criticize him for when you're drafted in the same class as LeBron James. You're not going to be LeBron James but at least work on evolving your game more than just being a scorer. Because he said today he always felt like if he wasn't doing numbers on the offensive end, he wasn't contributing. So I think if he had kind of taken his game to more of a facilitator role at some points, he could have had a better career. But everybody can't be LeBron James. He needed a good point guard because when he had Chauncey Wilson, when he had Jason Kidd, he made out the first round those two years, which are the only two years he made out the first round. So – Miller always needed a good point guard to kind of rein him in and help him uh, get something going. Yeah, but even even with your Lou Will point, it's like that's more like I said. I don't I don't know if Melo can can go can be a Ray Allen, which is a perfect example of a of all star. You know, one of the best to ever do it, and kind of come down to a, to the role player. You know that that you know that was we saw in Miami, and and that's my and that's the only big thing that I think a lot of teams. Um, it's kind of holding their breath on us because if we bring Melo and he's not happy, does he mess with our chemistry? And that's what he wants to be on a contender. But you know, all the contenders, their contenders are right right now without Melo. And you think you would think adding Melo does does help you from a talent standpoint. But if he's not getting the looks, if he's not getting this, if that if that change if that changes how it is, and they don't have no they don't have no I guess like example of seeing Melo that way. Which is why I that, that's the only reason why I think teams are holding back because they don't want to mess with, up what they got. And I don't, uh, just another analogy, I don't know if you ever watched um, the last season of Last Chance U, but they brought back Malik Wright from the previous team, and he's on the scout team only, but he really was the best quarterback, and everybody was so worried about him, and they're not focused, and they kind of you know let the season get away from them. So you know, it, it just it just it, it just a um, peculiar case and. Like you said, if if the locker room is not strong already, um, you know, then then you know it, it it could hurt, which is why you would think a, a rocket team would have worked because 
Chris Paul hard and you got Dan Tony, you got veteran guys who've been in the league for a long time. You would think that would have worked. Uh, um, cause you, cause you know, I'm more, I'm more inclined to him going to a veteran team like the Rockets, like he did versus going to a Sixers or a Bucks team who is, you know, um, you know, young is young and still growing. And your point about the Pistons, that's a perfect team just because I feel like there he can be a, like, he can be like, he can feel like he's like one of the, like the pieces why we won the championship being a role player for the, you know, for the Sixers, so a team that really, they need you, but they don't need you. You know, it's kind of hard to be like, if you feel like you did something purposely, but you know, being on the Pistons, you get them into the playoffs because they added you because they didn't make, they didn't make it last year or that they made AC last year got swept. So they really didn't make it. Um, but you had Drummond, you know, Blake Griffin, Rose, and you got Melo right there. You know that's a problem. And you can say Melo, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a key reason why we won the championship. So maybe, maybe, maybe he had to go to a team like that. Maybe a contender is not realistic um, at this time. Well, you know, because it's a team come out of nowhere. So it could be a team that come out of nowhere and that becomes good because they add Melo. But you know, it's, it's, it just, it is for GM's sake. They try not to mess up their chemistry, what they got. And another team out of uh, another team that you should think about maybe, maybe is going back home to the Denver Nuggets, um, you know, especially with Michael Porter Jr. No, he he would never and play. He would never. Why not? Play. <laughs> but why not though? Because I mean, they need a small forward. Michael Porter Jr. can't stay healthy. You, I mean, you, I mean, who, who, who are you saying? Will Barton's better than Carmelo Anthony? Like I wouldn't. I, I mean, um, but 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 that's the that's the thing though when like. Melo's better than a lot of guys, but a lot of teams would prefer teams. Exactly, and that's why. That, that's, so that, that's, that's why. why and that's so why, that's why, team why I, I don't think he'll go to Denver. Teams don't want him, and that's my team, and that's why he's a phrasing now. I, I just think it's. I think his personality and ego is too, is too strong, um, and that just for a quiet guy, it's just too strong, and that just that's just my opinion on it. Like, I, I feel like there are teams that um, he could land on and be. A valuable contributor, or be like a key reason where they took like a little small leap or something like that. Like they've made other moves now for us, like getting, oh my God, Charlotte Parsons, and uh, I like Evan Turner. And they got Allen Crabb, and they went and got Jabari Parker. But like the Hawks would have been a solid team for Melo. Like him, Trey, and John Collins, like he could have been like their vet, or like they could have brought in like get brought Vince Carter back and brought Melo in. They could have probably did something pretty, pretty good or. Um, he used to New York cold, go to Minnesota and play with Cat and Wiggins, uh, Covington. Yeah, but see, he won't he won't you know, contend that's a, though, and that's and that's the and see, and that's why his list is kind of I want to say unrealistic. You know, if you want a contender, yeah, we got to worry about the chemistry. You messing it up, or would you rather go play for a team like the Hawks? Which I I, I don't I don't think that's a, you know that's a bad idea. I, obviously, now it's kind of a log jam in that position, but. You know, or even or even the Minnesota one. You know that those are those are not in Detroit. That's, those are not bad options. But do, Mel, do Melo think he can go? He don't. I, he want to win a championship or at least get there. So I, I feel like he does want to do that. So you know, kind of doing that with those teams, and he he know that's not the way. Uh, especially the Wolves, just because it's in the West. Um, you know, at least the East have a shot. But I don't know. It it's very interesting, and I'm I I, I am willing to see what team gets him. And hopefully they hold on to him instead of what Rockets did last year. Yeah, everybody already made moves, but man, they lost Kawhi, they lost Danny Green, but him on Toronto would have been yeah, pretty, that'd be, that'd pretty be solid. Pretty I mean, they, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, they got they got RHJ and they brought in Stanley, you know, and they still have OG coming back. Who's going to get better? But him on like Toronto, man, that's a a guaranteed playoff team, and with the right matchup, right moments, you could probably sneak back into the. East final again. Yeah, you're right. You know, so. you, you, you're right. You're right about that. Um, let's change gears. Go into the uh, NFL real quick. You know, like I say, Hall of Fame NFL game has came on, and you know, Buck, Bron- Broncos versus Falcons. It wasn't that great to watch, but um, you know, we, we we got to see Julio Jones running around um, before the game and stuff like that. So it's, it's good to see that you know the stars are back, and we're gonna you know the season gonna get on the way. Um, so rolling off our NFL. Our tears last week, we got a lot of heat back on um, <laughs> Marcus Mariota. And everybody want to, you know, Titans fans especially, came hard at us um, about about the ridiculous. ridiculous. And saying that, you know, he's going to do this and do this. So we, we thought it would be something fun. And let's try to build the build the perfect quarterback. Um, you know, that's from, you know, take, taking bits and parts of uh, quarterbacks in the league game, put them all together as one. And that'll be it. That'll be our perfect quarterback. So the credit goes we got 
you know, you got your IQ. Uh, that's just knowing what situations on the field is. You know, you know how they go. Um, your throwing strength, that's your arms. Um, you got the release, you know, the accuracy of a quarterback, um, the legs, uh, character. I, I put character as a, as one because you 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 know when a quarterback is the face of the franchise, and I'm not I don't want to throw some shots at some some guys, but you know, for example, if we if we interviewing quarterbacks. You know, one quarterback we we can't interview. Uh, yeah, Who we is boy it? Lamar Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Why you say that? I I don't know what he be talking about. I can't understand him. <laughs> they just you know what I'm saying just just guys like that. I'm talking about you know I, he don't he don't appeal to me as a as the uh, face of the franchise in, in my, you know, that just me looking at them. Um, and then uh, passion, uh, I feel like that's, that's a, you know, that, that's kind of an intangible thing. And, you know, how, how, how hard do you want it? Uh, things like that. Um, so, I mean, we, we can just go back and forth um, on each category and then discuss, you know, why we, why we, why we went the way we did. Um, so for, 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 for the head of the quarterback, the IQ, who, who do you have? Um, really, man, out of the, the categories we came up with, I don't really think you can really build a perfect QB. Um, like, I care about more, like, intangibles just because of, um, like, the only thing I value for is, like, building a QB are just two of these criteria. That's accuracy and just being a good locker room guy. Like, I don't really care about arm strength, things like that. Um, like, like IQ, I think that can be – that that's team dependent because sometimes if you have the weapons – you know, you, you can look good, like how Dak looks good. And we don't know if he has a high IQ or not. He has some weapons. And then when he doesn't have weapons, he looks bad. So, um, if, I, if I had to pick somebody for his IQ, I will just pick Tom Brady. But it's kind of hard to just uh, build a QB off of, like, certain things just because of, um, like, look at a guy like Trubisky. He, he looks terrible the first year, but he gets a different he's still, coach. He's still trying. Good. So, he's still trying. So, you know, he looks good. And then uh, looking like Mariota, he has, like, speed and things like that, but he's not accurate. Um, people say he's a nice guy. So, like, you know, as far as, like, character, he has that. But I don't think he's good. I think QBs are so situational dependent. You know, long as you, I feel like as long as you have just the, the good character and you're accurate when you're trying to make some plays, you're good. Um, like Tim Tebow, he wasn't accurate, but he had those intangibles. So and he made it work for a year in Denver. It could have probably made it work other places too. So um as far as just like the physical, as long as you're accurate. And when you're accurate when you need to be pretty much. Uh I would go for if I were doing this IQ, I think Drew Brees is one of the smartest guys um to have played a position um alongside with Brady and Peyton Man and guys like that. Um Drew Brees is you know, from from what I've seen and from San Diego days to New Orleans days, um you know, it's, it's always the, it's always great to have that extension, that coach on the field, that coach on the field, um, on on the court. You know, your, your magics of the world, um, and Drew Brees fits right into that mode. Um, and I feel like he, you know, he can he, regardless of how great Sean Payton is, I feel like Drew Brees when he, you know, his uh, he can put guys in the right situation. And he know what to uh, what to get done and and how to get it done. Um, and he's been doing that forever. So. Um, I will I will stick with Drew Brees as far as like IQ wise if I'm building the the perfect guy and you know you talk about release now now there's a there's a lot of different things about release because you know that also plays into your arm strength um, uh, because you got you got guys like you know Drew Brees this past season and yes he was accurate and yes he hit, you know set the record for completion percentage but I mean but how many times did he really go deep down the field? Um, we didn't, we didn't really get to see a deep his deep accuracy as much because his arm is fading out. But you know, from short accuracy, he's one of the best to ever do it, um, especially right right now in, in that in that Sean Payton offense. So, but you got guys like you know Aaron Rodgers who can put it on the rope from fifty yards out and it's like right on the money. Um, something that come to mind to me is that playoff game versus the Cowboys with Jared Cook going to the sideline. Like that was one of the most accurate passes I ever seen. Um, dead on the sideline, only his only his receiver can get it, and and it was a, a big moment, um, which he always tend to show up on. Um, so as far as like accuracy, you know, you got you got to think about you got to think about that. You got to think about deep, short, intermediate, um, and now that always ties into your arm strength, especially when you deep in um, intermediate game. Um, 
for, you know, like uh, how you said for legs, like Mariota's fast. But I was more thinking about um, got a guy like Russ, and from what I'm, and what I mean by this is like, you know how you know how he can make plays, he he can extend plays, and um, you know when when you think you got him, you don't. Um, Carson Wentz kind of mind as well when he's healthy, uh, and, and and that's just more than just more than just being Lamar Jackson and Cam Newton and taking off down the field. Um, it's about because to me, I'm more of a guy. I like I like my quarterbacks who can extend the plays, still looking downfield, look still looking to make the make the play. Uh, I think Baker does a good job of that as well. Um, but if I had to choose one one of my guy right now, I, I feel like the Russ is the guy. That, like I said, I'm not I'm not talking about just legs as far as running. Um, because you know, I, I I could care less for a scrambling quarterback. That's not my 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 uh, what's it called? My yeah, that's your yeah, preference. Yeah, my preference. Yeah, that's where I'm from. That's not my preference. But you know, a guy like Russ who can scramble, um, but he's he's not looking to get, get me 80 yards rushing. He's he's trying to take certain plays and make do what the offense needs to be done. Uh, he's one of my favorite guys to play the position too. Uh, which you know we we really didn't talk about too much of the order last week, but you know tier one him being at the bottom, I was kind of mad about that. Uh, like I feel like he's a top four quarterback, so I was kind of upset about that a little bit. But that's our preference too as well. So um, for for like passing and stuff like that, who who would you say is like one of the best you know passing wise? Because that's that's why I feel like your guy Brady um, comes into play because you know he kind he kind of quiet, but then on the, on the field, man, he's like a that's. <laughs> Uh, a whole different animal, and you can see that, and it and it shows throughout this whole team. And even when you think, even when you think he's so, you know, the Patriots roster is not good enough. He don't have the receivers, and then boom, he making this. Uh, he he gets into the phase, and he has a lot of confidence in in his guys. Um, and you know, they they feel right, they feel him, and they can make a lot of things happen because we know uh, what was the receiver, the white guy, uh, Chris Hogan. Like we probably will never, we probably oh, will yeah. never hear of him again. I don't even know what team he's on. Is it, is it on the page? Yeah. Oh no, nah, he. Uh, oh, it's, oh, where did oh, he yeah. sign? Yeah, I forgot what team he signed to, but yeah, he's not on the Patriots anymore. But um, yeah, it's a lot of guys like people didn't know who Julian Edelman was. The guy's a former receiver, converted QB, and like even Wes Welker or uh, Amendola. Like the Patriots always bring somebody out of the woodworks and kind of make them seem like a elite level superstar. So Brady, it doesn't matter about the weapons; he'll make somebody look pretty good. Um, but I'll probably say Russ as well, just because of everything you said. He he can after his really first two years of kind of navigating through the league because Russ is on the for a typical QB like a six three six four. You know he's on the smaller side of that. But so once he kind of uh, learned his way in the league, he's kind of been a, a top QB since then. Chris Ogan's on the Panthers. On the Panthers. See, we would never know that because we're not gonna worry about him every day. Because he's not gonna no. start over there, so no, nah, he. I mean, he'll probably get some. He'll probably get some plays just because of you know. I don't really think the Panthers have a deep core of receivers. I mean, McCaffrey's probably their best receiver. And he's a running back. Uh, you got well, you, you got, got DJ got Moore. Moore. I like DJ Moore. I think he's gonna have a yeah. breakout season. And uh, Curtis Samuel, they you know, it's all it's all talk right now. But they've been talking. They've been talking about those two guys a lot. Um, so that that's two guys that they they lean heavy on, but um, also you know, uh, what do you think about as far as you know the the you know like you say it's all situ- situational dependent, but as far as building the perfect quarterback, when you have a guy like Mahomes who can uh, kind of do it all, um, yes, it's only been one season that we've seen this, um, but you know from an arm strength standpoint, accuracy, I feel like he has a collect calm head and IQ to know what to do and. Um, um, we know we, we we see the passion, we see the we see the character. He's he's not a guy who's a cocky guy. He's a he's a team guy, and like you said, that's something we look at um, team guys and know about the team more than just more about them. That's you know guys like Ben Ben Roethlisberger. He doesn't fit that bill um, as far as you know team guy. He's I mean he he cares about winning, but most time he's about him. And when you got guys like Mahomes coming up in the league, I feel like you know it's the the quarterback position gonna be in a good spot. Um, I think him and Wentz are two guys who uh, can 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 have it all. That as far as like you know, from top to bottom, every any category we, li- we list, I feel like they can be a top five in each of those. And and we, and I I really want Carson Wentz to stay healthy because 
I feel like his career is, is going the wrong way and it's going to be derailed by injuries when you have the great talent that he does. Yeah, his resume is going to already be a little bit hurt because he had an MVP season, but he couldn't finish the year. So Brady was <laughs> doing his MVP award. And, and then Nick and Foles then, stole the Super Bowl. <laughs> then Nick Foles stole it. Yeah, I mean, you know, who knows whether they still make the Super Bowl or not. But we can assume that if Nick Foles got there, we're going to assume Carson Wentz, who's a better player, would have did the same thing. And he would have probably got that MVP. So, you know, really can't say hypothetically what would have happened for the Super Bowl side in the playoffs. But – Definitely, he would have won that MVP. Oh, yeah. Well, just, just talking about that, you know how the NFL is always mostly chopped, especially in the playoffs. The one seeds, the two seeds, usually, usually made a conference final, uh, conference finals, conference championship game, and they were 13 and three. They had, they had the best record, hit them and the, them and the Patriots, so, uh, and, and the Vikings. So they would have been, uh, they would have been there anyway, uh, you know, especially Minnesota had to go to them, um, to play that game, but, um, so, if we move on from a quarter of that talk, you know, cause it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot. It's going to be a lot of things to say because, you know, especially with the, all these lists coming out and people are going to critique these each and every week. And I think it's going to be funny when, you know, because like you can't, you can't hype up, um, let's say Tom Brady because he plays, he plays the, um, you know, uh, Buccaneers or something while, while you got Mahomes playing, playing the, uh, playing the Vikings or something. And, you know, he, he might struggle a little bit, but, Oh, well, Brady can do this versus them, and people not realizing the context about who they playing and who you know saying like that. Um, so I, I know I know that quarterback is going to be uh, very very critiqued a lot, a lot this year because we know we know one quarterback who uh, who gonna lose his job, and that's uh, Marcus Mariota. I said before you <laughs> move on, we ran a poll and people actually voted that he belongs top rank in the top eleven to twenty. Uh, that is that's, that's ridiculous. That's sad. That's sad. That's that, that's ridiculous. Um, I want some of y'all to evaluate your football IQ. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure what film you're watching, or I'm not sure what measurements you're looking at. But just for fun, my tier one: Brady, Rogers, Mahomes, Luck, Russ, Breeze, Bigman, and Rivers. Okay, he's not better than any of those guys for sure. Then you look at tier two. Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz, Matthew Stafford, Deshaun Watson, Jarrett Goff, and Baker Mayfield. He's not better than them. So we're already at 14 guys. Then you got Jimmy G. He's not better than him. And we only have a 10-game sample <laughs> side of Jimmy G. But, but, from, but from that 10-game sample side, he's basically completed 60% of his passes every game except for one. And in some of those games, he was even hitting 70% of his passes. So just based off of that, we can assume – that he's gonna, he's an elite quarterback, which I, I think he is. Um, I think he's gonna be tier two this coming up season. Mariota's not better than Cam. He's not better than Dak. He's not better than Andy Dalton. He's not better than Sam Darnold at this moment. He's not better than Jameis. Like, that's come on, man. <laughs> Mariota is not eleven through twenty. He bought. He's now, you can't even. He, he's but Mariota is twenty eight through thirty four. <laughs> Yeah, man, Mariota is not better than Ryan Tanner. Here. Yeah, yeah, and that's and the thing is, I, I, I got we got a bet on somebody who thinks Mariota would be a top twenty uh, passing yards per game. Where he was twenty nine last year, um, so I don't, I don't know if he's gonna, you know, if they think, you know, if they think he's gonna be top twenty. Uh, it's kind of hard to, kind of hard to do that when a lot of quarterbacks are better than you. I mean, the guy is below five hundred QB record, twenty seven wins, twenty eight losses. He's never thrown past 3,500 yards. His highest amount of yards for this second year, and that was 3,426. I mean, I the guy, QB to touchdown ratio is pretty much terrible. I mean, come on. You got 69 touchdowns, 42 interceptions. That's, that's terrible. Like, what are you? What is he good at? He's not a top 20 QB. <laughs> he's, he's just not. He's he, he not. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what they, I don't know what they, uh, where people are seeing that, but – Let's move on because he go, we can go all day about Marcus Mariota. Um, so it's time to put our GM hats on. Time for tool. <laughs> for real. Uh, time to put our GM hats on. And so what we're going to do is the five teams that are had the worst Super Bowl odds, uh, we're going to just talk about who we think um, is in the best, you know, in the best place to, to get better 
uh, in a hurry. And maybe two or three years down the line, we're talking about them uh, playoffs and possible Super Bowl. Um, so the the five teams with the worst Super Bowl odds heading into the season, that's the Washington Redskins, the Miami Dolphins, Arizona Cardinals, Tampa Bay Bucks, and the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, so I, I, I'll, I'll give the floor to you. Out of those five teams, uh, which team do you see head in the right direction for what moves we saw so far this season? And maybe, you know, stories that you heard so far heading into training camp and, and what the season is going to hold out. Like, who's going who's going in the right direction uh, for you? I think it's the Bucs. Uh, having Bruce Arians, who can hopefully take Jameis to the next level. They have Peyton Barber, Ron Jones. You're hoping somebody emerges in that backfield. Mike Evans is still young. Chris Godwin is a young guy. O.J. Howard, um, they're building up that defense a little bit. If everything clicks right, even if they move on from Jameis, if they can just bring in the right QB, the pieces are in play, um, so they can definitely make something happen. Um, the other teams, I really can't see it happening because I want I want to go with the Cardinals, but I can't go with the Cardinals because – you got Jimmy G and Kyle Shanahan on the 49ers. Right. You got Russ still in his prime, and you still got the Rams. So I couldn't say the Cardinals, um, but I did think about them. Uh, I wanted to go as a sleeper, the Dolphins, yeah. because because Brady, he'll be out there in maybe two, three years. So then it's just going to be Rosen, Allen, and Darnold all competing against each other, whoever emerges out of that. Um, and then it, it depends upon if Belichick retires too. So you know, if he sticks around a few more years, I think the Patriots could still win nine, ten games even without Brady. Um, so that's how my thinking went. Redskins, if Zeke leaves the Cowboys, uh, I still think filling with Carson Wentz and putting talent around him, they'll still be the the best team. And Bengals, um, they're they're kind of in flux right now, so I really couldn't say defensively what they'll be, but. Uh, it, it's the Bucks for me. Bucks were the easy choice once I broke down every situation. Yeah, and I, I, I'll stay in Florida. I'll go with the Dolphins because, um, yes, Bruce Arians is a great coach, and we know we know he's gonna bring it to the table. We know all that, but Miami has the blank ca- the blank cave canvas that we're talking about, and uh, that we always talked about as far as like as a GM, you want to have a clean slate. Um, I think they they did an amazing job at the draft, um, especially the way they fleeced uh, Arizona Cardinals. Uh, getting Josh Rosen, and they traded back, and then traded that pick for uh, Josh Rosen. I think um, I I like I like the new hire that they got. Um, I think I think you know coming from that Patriots way, um, you know Brian Flores is going to be. I think I think he's going to be one of the best defensive minds in the game. I think once he get like you see the roster that he has on defense, and once you realize that you know you're going to see it well. Miami Dolphins, they, you know, they wasn't that great, but he didn't have he, – he's not going to have the talent this year. But he's going to put the, the culture in place and everything in place. And and once Josh – if Josh Rosen is the guy, and that's what it probably predicates around him being that guy, if Josh Rosen can be what he, he was drafted as a top-10 quarterback and pan out, you're talking about something ideally to the New England Patriots. And that's your, your quarterback who's a pocket passer in Rosen and Brady. You got your defensive minded coach and Belichick and Flores, and uh, they came the same. They come up the same way as far as do your job, and I think, and I, I really think, just like you said, as long as when Brady retire, it's kind of an upper grab division uh, where you can say that too for the Bucks because it's always changing the guards of who's going to win that division. Um, but right now, it's pretty tough. Um, and just like you said for the, uh, just like you said for the uh, for the Cardinals, but here. Sam Donald is young. Josh Allen is young. Rosen, who should win the job. I don't know why they want to go with Fitzpatrick, but um, let Rosen just have it and let him, you know, die, die, live, swing, sink or swim, I guess you could say. Um, but you got him, him he, he's young, and, and once Tom Brady's out of there, you're talking about a team that can take take a step in. I mean, you can, you can win the division the following year if Brady, Brady retire. You know, who knows how the, how the roster is going to pan out. Because I think Brady got, what, maybe two years left, two to three. He says 40, so yeah. Forty-five, so I don't know how long he really gonna play, but I'm gonna give him two or three years, and by that time, I think Flores is gonna put the put the pieces together and how they should go, and you're gonna talk about the you'll be talking about the Miami Dolphins uh, real soon. I, I'm 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 a believer in Brian Flores. Yeah, I went with Bucks for another reason too. Like we were just saying about Brady, Breeze maybe has one more year, maybe two left. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan's Matt old. Ryan, Ryan's old too. Yeah, he's pretty old. 
Yeah, Matt Ryan. I think he's uh, on his tenth, maybe eleventh year. He, he's, Something like I that. I think he's he's like if Breeze is thirty nine or forty. Ryan's like thirty five. Like he's not that far behind him. But behind yeah, all his. I, I know. Yeah, I know he was two thousand eight draft. I think he's like thirty four, thirty five. So yeah, another you know couple seasons he'll probably be. Well, guys that last longer just based on you know taking care of themselves and things like that. But who knows how him and Julio look in a few years? So. Um, I think the Bucks really could just be a few defensive pieces, and if, if, if Jameis the guy, maybe. Um, but if Jameis not the guy, if they get the right QB, um, I think they could easily ascend and win that division because that division turns over every year for us who wins it. And I think Cam is going to be on his way down shortly. Um, that may seem like a hot take to Cam lovers, but <laughs> the dude, he's a big, he's a big guy, and he can handle some, you know, some hits, but constantly getting hit and he's never been an accurate thrower as he ages he's not going to get any more accurate <laughs> so I mean I think Cam only has completed six of his passes probably twice in his career for you know for a season so he's not going to get more accurate now if he's not accurate already it's not going to happen overnight so I think you know it depends upon how Bruce Arians health is and what they do with James. Now, now my thing is now if they had to start over um, and let James go, you know, that can hold him back for a second. And because unless, because I don't believe Tampa Bay is going to be that sorry to where they're getting, they're getting Trevor Lawrence in two years or they're getting two, if, if two will go top five or Herbert go top five, I don't think they'll be that sorry. So, you know, if they was to replace Jamie Winston, you don't really see a lot of quarterback um, free agent like that. Like you don't see a big name free agent go somewhere. So does that, does do, or do you think Bruce Arians can make someone kind of like I, I'm not gonna say he made Carson Palmer because Carson Palmer is always a good quarterback, but you know how he can make you go from a a, a good quarterback to a great quarterback. Carson Palmer is a perfect example of that. Um, I mean, if they move on with James, I mean, what 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 would they do? Because now it's kind of like they kind of taking a step back a little bit, don't you think? Uh, if they if they move on from James, I think it'll probably be for the best because I don't think they want to pay him. And then if you if you feel like okay we've had two three four coaches who tried to work with him he just not right. turning what we expect as a first pick you kind of have to move on from him so that kind of opens up I won't say Pandora's box but it kind of opens up all right when do we draft someone at QB like do we draft someone this season no matter what third fourth round um, do we kind of see what happens in Cincinnati do they let Andy go we bring us in a cheap QB like. Um, I'm not an Andy Dalton fan, but you know he can for about two, you know, about two touchdowns a game, about thirty eight hundred to four hundred, thirty thirty hundred to four thousand yards. You know he can get there for you. So if you need something like that, or you got this hope, you can just hit on the QB later on in the draft. You know, third, fourth round. So that's not that wouldn't be a bad idea. And like who, like who really knows? Because the NFL it changes so much. You know, maybe they can maybe they get snag a, a Jacoba Brissett or something. Or maybe like they that. get I, I, I like, I like maybe they get Marcus Mariota. Who knows? You know? oh, they, get him, <laughs> I mean, they they get him. They, they pick going in the trash. <laughs> hey, that's for real though. Um, last thing before we move on, and uh, you know, like I said, the Hall of Fame ceremony is coming up. Um, we were talking about a couple of guys who who who, who made it and. And you know what their contribution was as far as you know, because uh, this is like I said, this is our generation that we got to see play. You know, we're not watching Hall of Fame games with guys played the '90s no more. Um, this, this is all this is all 2000s and um, uh, you know our prime time of growing up. So Chant Bailey, Ty Law, two great corners that you know dominated for a long time. Ed Reed, who I believe is the greatest safety. I don't know about you, but uh, I think Ed Reed is the greatest safety that played the game. Tony Gonzalez, I think he's also the greatest tight end. Now you can have a debate about Gronk and Shannon Sharp, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with Tony G all day long. Um, Kevin Mawa, I, you know that was, you know you know you know us playing Madden back in the day, man. He always was ni- like a 97, 98, yeah. 99 yeah, he overall. Was, yeah, he was, I want the best players. Yeah. <laughs> always the best players. So you know he, I think he finally gets in um, from the he played with the Jets. Um, Pat Bowling, uh, he he just he just recently passed too, and that's and that was crazy. But I, I think he died after he. I want to say he died after he got the um, Hall of Fame nod, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. So you know that's kind of sad that you know I, I don't know. Who, I, 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 was, I assume his wife is going to give the speech um, for that. But um, then you got Johnny Robinson, who's like you know that, that's that senior person who always gets in, who 
was overlooked for 50 years, and he got in. So I don't know too much about him, but these other guys, man, uh, you got any, any personal take on them? Um, anything to think of? Um, you know, congrats to everybody who made it. They all deserved it. Um, my thoughts on Hall of Fames in general, most of them really suck. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, some of them either are biased or, okay, I understand, like, the Basketball Hall of Fame, for example. They they take it, they call it the Basketball Hall of Fame. They count everything. Um, I'm not opposed to that, but I think the NBA should have did, did a separate Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. But it's too. It, but it's really too late now at this point. So, but most Hall of Fame suck because, especially the NBA. Well, I'm just gonna say I can't say I'm gonna say basketball. The basketball Hall of Fame kind of sucks because everybody gets to get in it. The NFL Hall of Fame doesn't let everybody. In. It's more exclusive, but it sucks because it plays favorites. There's no way To is a didn't make it on the first battle. Yeah, I, I, I but see that thing. That's the thing though. That's that might have been the only case though um, of. Of an elite guy get passed over who shouldn't have. That was that was more politics than anything. But you know, but you know the the other one, anybody else who got passed over, you know, it, it, it really was because somebody who was up was better than them. Um, like I think kind of mind like Tim Brown. I think he got passed up a couple times. Maybe Terrell Davis got passed up a couple times. But you got to think Terrell Davis didn't last too long. Uh, he you know he only played like what eight nine seasons. Um, you know, it was a great so, year, though. Was great, great year. Now, hey, I'm not gonna not gonna knock him because he would have been one of the best players the game. But you know, with the injuries, and all that stuff like that, I can understand why a guy like him don't make it the first time. Um, but that T.O. man, that that really was sad for the NFL. But you, you can go continue. That's was, that's was really sad. Yeah, I, I'm ready to see. Um, I, I want to see how it goes for Tory Holt. Uh, people don't really probably remember him. <laughs> That much, but he's from the Rams era, you know, the greatest show on turf. So I want to see how it looks for uh, Tory Holt, like how long, you know, before he gets in. Um, the baseball Hall of Fame sucks. They want to put in certain guys for, for contributions and all that kind of stuff. They want to hold certain guys out because of the steroid era, all that kind of stuff. Man, everybody, Barry sure. Bonds is probably the best baseball player I ever saw. Yeah. Um, no arguments for me. And just think of, and then just look at, he was killing the game before he. Allegedly started juicing, he was still killing the game then. So, like, why wouldn't he get in the Hall of Fame? And then baseball still made millions and millions of dollars off of him breaking the home run record, things like that. So, why wouldn't you put the guy in the Hall of Fame? So, yeah, I, Hall of Fame, they are great, they're needed, you know, to enshrine the elites of your, your sport, but they suck in a sense of who they want to put, they, who they want to put in, or why they're putting them in, or things like that. Like, I think Hall of Fame suck on that point. Like, the NBA Hall of Fame should not just have every dang body in it. It should have the elites of the elites in the Hall of Fame. Like, we were just talking earlier. If we had an NBA Hall of Fame, Melo barely making the cut. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's, he's, <laughs> he's definitely somebody. He's a friend. <laughs> and he, he's definitely somebody we're going to pass up a couple times before we ever get exactly. in. Yeah. Exactly. Like, Somebody like a Michael Jordan, that's a first ballot Hall of Famer. LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, that's a first ballot Hall of Famer. But depending upon what class he's in, uh, Carmelo Anthony would be a second or third ballot Hall of Famer, for example. That, and that's not a diss to Melo because he had a great career, 10-time All-Star, 6-time All-NBA, scoring champion. But outside of that, his other success comes from other basketball avenues, the Olympic gold medals. Mm-hmm. The NCAA champion, giving Syracuse their first, uh, I'm gonna say their first, but their, no, their, their championship, Jim Beheim's first championship at Syracuse in 2003, things like that. Like that's those are other avenues of of basketball success. That's not NBA success, pretty much. Even though he was an NBA player on the Olympic team, it wasn't directly NBA accolade. Right, and I think I want to say what Tony Gonzalez's first ballot. Ed Reed's first ballot. Uh, I think Ty Law was passed up. I don't think he's for. I don't think he's first ballot. But and I, I want to say Champ Bay, Champ Bailey was passed up too, um, for 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 a couple of times. And that's only because I mean, damn, I mean, Ray Ray Moss, uh, Ray Lewis, got guys you know are first. But they they have to push you out the way. That's just how it is. And like same thing with Tory Holt. I, you know, if Tory Holt don't get in, any, he don't get in soon. Um. 
this 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 flux of receivers now, like your Julio's, um, I, you know Julio, especially Larry, Larry Fitzgerald coming up. Um, this, does Calvin Johnson get in? Did he, I mean, he's a Hall of Fame player, but does he get in because he played long enough, or, he, or 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 what? What do you think about Calvin Johnson? Oh, Calvin, Calvin has to get in. I okay, mean, so yeah, so that, that's what I wanted to clear up. I, I, I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say he'll be first ballot. Dude, he but, might be first ballot though. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, but like I think he, I think he may not be first back because, like you said, he know he kind of left early. But I think he should be right, first right, back right, depending right. upon who he runs, who he runs up against on the on the ballot. Right. So, so yeah, it's hard because I mean I'm not really a you know because I, I think Isaac Bruce is waiting waiting as well from this great show on turf yeah. and and I think they're I was I don't know they kind of a they are they the fringe guys to me just like you know just they, they're above good but maybe less than elite so it's kind of like they're gonna get in but it's like no matter when and uh you know maybe maybe they might be johnny robinson <laughs> I, I, I can't say it toward hope's friends like this was like my uh, hall of fame because you know really a, i'm not really a, uh i don't look at tory hope and say that's, and that's a that's a hall of fame receiver that's just me um I mean, six consecutive years and thirteen hundred yards. The only person who did it more times was Jerry Rice. Um, then you just look at some of you know they they won a Super Bowl. They made another one, lost to the Patriots. Um, like he he doesn't stand out as like that dominant name like Randy Moss or Terrell Owens. I think that's kind of why, or even like, he doesn't even stand out like Marvin Harrison. I think even people may sleep on Marvin Harrison because they'll say oh he played with Peyton Manning things like that. So. You know, when it comes to the Hall of Fame, it's so subjective of preference or things like that. You know, it's kind of like if we did a basketball Hall of Fame right now, and somebody says Clay Thompson, you are gonna say, "Oh hell no, he ain't, he ain't first ballot." No. <laughs> but, you, <laughs> but you look at like a resume or something, people gonna be like, "You saying this guy not first ballot?" So, like that's why I think Hall of Fame are kind of you know they, as far as like criteria, they try to outline it pretty good, but it's all so subjective of preference and context too like if somebody's name doesn't stand out or what, i mean um, but that's what just, that's what it should do though you know um to me um and who's who's to say i mean who's to say i mean because the yeah, think about it, like tory holt for example you know he was what the fourth best player on that team offensive wise because I, I can't say that man. kurt warner 11 kurt seasons warner and seven Falk. pro bowls two all pros let the league in receiving yards twice i mean you got kurt you got you got kurt warner who was dominant marshall Falk, and he and tory holt's not better than orlando pace yeah yes is a left tackle but he's not he, he's not better um so he's the fourth best player on the field uh on that team now grand that's then that's more that's more you know great for the rams um but you know i'm just saying i, I don't know it, it's because you can say all the numbers like that, but you got a guy like Frank Gore, who I don't think is a Hall of Famer, yet he's going to finish top four of all time rushing. Um, you know, and that's, you know, I don't, I don't think he's a Hall of Famer. So I, don't, I didn't, I don't, and to be honest, it might be a crazy hot take or whatever. I don't think Jerome Bettis was a Hall of Famer either. Um, oh, bus. <laughs> I, I mean, I think he was cause like, cause like, it's, it's alluding to your point though. It's, it's preference and who people like because. Come on, I, I mean, we can sit here and put, for example, Jerome Bettis next to any other running backs, you know, that made the Hall of Fame, and where would he be at? Um, you know, and he, uh, you, you stack you, you stacking next to Frank Gore, who I don't think is one, but you stacking next to Frank yeah. Gore, and Frank Gore shatters him, you know, you know, like you know what I'm saying, and you know, and I think you know he's kind of Jerome Bettis is liked a lot, and like you said, and that and that leads to, to that, and Torrey Holt, who quiet. As a receiver, you know he's he might get passed up a lot because you know it's Torrey Holt. We just wait till next year. Oh, now Larry Fitzgerald for for Hall of Fame, so we'll put Larry over at Torrey Holt, and it, 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 the exactly. cycle will continue to keep you know keep repeating itself. Um, so you know I I do I mean I'm not saying that he's not an offense receiver. I, I I know I think he's more of a fringe guy who is kind of like uh, like I I want to say I want to say Will, um is it Willis not Willis Reed? What's, what's, what's Reed first name from the Buffalo Bills receiver? Um, I can't think of his name. Uh, from the Bills, from the Bills, a receiver, it's maybe Jeff Reed or something like that. Um, where was damn play with Jim Kelly? I can't think of his name. Jake Reed, that's all right. I can't remember. I, I can't think of who you're talking about right now, man. Not Jake Reed. It must be Jeff Reed. But either way, the receiver from the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I don't think he hit. It took him 
a long time. He matter of fact, he was one of the he was in the Hall of Fame class. Like you know, when I started watching Hall of Fame, like you know, and he was like maybe ten. Like he played in like the nineties with Jim Kelly. So that's that's you know that's fifteen ten years fifteen years away from when he played. So um, my, my my point was my point was that is like you know it could Torrey Hill could be one of those guys that wait a while. Um, and you got to think with the guys we got now. You know, Julio Jones is going to be a shoe in Calvin Johnson, Mary Fitzgerald. Oh, you were talking about Andre. Reed. Andre, damn, I, was, I said Jeffrey. That's not even close. That's a white guy. Um, uh, but uh, you know what I'm saying. But you got you got all, you got all these guys coming up. Antonio Brown, um, all these guys like here. You know, Torho got to get in because he's he's going to be waiting behind those guys if if not. And that's what, and that's what you got. You got guys like you know Johnny Robinson, who's a, who's a guy who's playing in the '60s. And now he's just he's just now getting in. Uh, I don't think Torrey was going that far, but you know, it's it's, it's just, that's just an example of you know you got to get in when you get in because, like you said, the Hall of Fame is so exclusive. And if you don't, if they don't like you, like To, they're gonna hold you out for whatever stupid reason. I don't care what the reason they had for for, for To. All of them should have been fired right there on the spot. Yeah, there's no way you can put Ram Moss in first ballot and put T and don't put To in first ballot. That's just ridiculous. They they were basically nick and nick. One A one A one B the whole year. Yeah, the whole career, yeah. I mean, so you know, it's all about preference of who you would take, you know. Um I'm not sure. Like I think maybe because Randy works in the media now and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but they definitely supposed to have been first ballot Hall of Famers. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, this what what was the excuse? He's a bad teammate. <laughs> Yeah, all, all the DS stuff. He's a bad teammate. That's ridiculous. He 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 did he dismantled teams and he was cared about himself more and all that kind of stuff. Well, all I know is when he's on the team, I mean, the team was great. <laughs> That's all I know. When he, and when he I, left, they were sorry. They, they, <laughs> exactly. The, the the Eagles didn't make the Super Bowl until he showed up and he played on a bum leg, stuff like that. You know, Cowboys but, thirteen and three with him. 49ers was 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 elite post Jerry Rice because of T.O. Yeah. yeah, I mean. And yeah, people try to bring up you know certain stuff that he did in the media about like the working out and the, the driveway. That's but funny to me. Rand, Randy did stuff. Yeah, Randy did stuff too. I, I don't want to bring it up because I like Randy and I don't want to bring up the old stuff. But you know, just just as controversial, just as controversial as To was, yeah, so was yeah, Randy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's and really to be honest, as far as trouble, like legal wise, Randy Moss was way more in trouble than than uh, To ever. Because <laughs> To exactly. never been in trouble at all. So you know. Yeah. So, you know, stuff like that, you know, people don't want to factor that in. They just look at – some people look at name and some people look at how things play out in the media. And maybe because Randy played in certain situations, you know, Minnesota, um, not as a prominent situation as like a Cowboys, things like that. Or, you know, it wasn't as blown up what he did with certain other teams like as it would be for, you know, T.O. for some reason. But that's just how it played out. But – T.O. still in the Hall of Fame, and I still don't blame him for not showing up. Hey, either. you're right. You're right. Do, you're do, right. Do, it, do it. Do it. Do it. your own way. Yeah, you're right about that. Um, so yeah, so congratulations to Tony Gonzalez, Ed Reed, uh, Champ Bailey, Ty Law, uh, Kevin Mawai, Pat Bowling, R.P. to him, and Johnny Robinson, and also give Brent. Brent is that his name Brandon. Well, I can't say his last name, but he's a media guy. He's also getting in as well. But um, Another thing I want to point out, you know, now we're going to see the Patriots guys getting in, and so I can finally, you know, I can use this to, to in the argument, hey, it wasn't all Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Rodney Harrison had a good point, but um, it, it, it's it's going to be weird, man. Like, I don't think a lot of Patriots guys will get in right away. Like, they're going to probably Oh, no, no, no. They won't now, They won't be first battle like, of course, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick will be. Uh, but definitely, definitely your Richard Seymour's. Um, well, actually, it might be just be Richard Seymour. Uh, but then I, I, I can't, I can't remember who said something about it. Rodney Harrison. Uh, no, it was somebody. It was somebody else recently that I heard, and they were talking about how, you know, because to be honest, like I didn't even think Ty Law was going to get in for a while. Um, oh and, man, if he, and, if, he didn't, if he didn't get in, yeah, but yeah, crazy. for a while though is what I'm saying, and, and it's it's because like you know outside of their Patrick success, you know. Most of them, most yeah, well, well, I say, well, I say this is like most of them would have had elite first ballot Hall of Fame careers if they stayed in New England. Uh, Richard Seymour come to mind. He went to Oakland and kind of like, you know, he's still good, but he he wasn't as great as he was. Um, for example, another one who who probably could have made it, or, you know, could have had a strong case, Chandler Jones. 
somebody like him would have had a, you know, especially what passers and how good he is. If he stayed in New England, you know how many sacks he probably would have got continuously every single year, Pro Bowl after Pro Bowl, especially when you're on a winning team. But now he goes to Arizona and kind of like he does, he still does the same thing, but just like a Tory Holt and being quiet is like we're not talking about it anymore. And you know, and, and I, I can't remember who who said it, but you know, your Ty Law, your Seymour's, your Willis McGinnis, Teddy Bruschi is like when they like Teddy Teddy stayed his whole career, but when they when they all left, like when they all left and McGinnis McG- McG- went to the Browns, it kind of like they they mystique kind of died off a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And and that's what we got from you know just 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 not of course he's not Hall of Famer, but you know, Malcolm, remember Malcolm Butler? They said he was the best corner in the game, and now look at oh, him now. No. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like when you leave the Patriots. And you're not Tom Brady. It's kind of like, it's kind of like we you know we just, just like just like we said earlier about Chris Hogan, the Walkers of the world. Walker already had a career, a good career. Elman, though, that's another one. Now they don't want to say he might be a Hall of Famer. That's just crazy talk. But um, they they were saying they were saying Elman, but if, you know if Elman came six seven years early, who knows? You know what I'm saying? It, it kind of and it kind of all changes. And and I know I the, the Patriots guys. I think they all gonna get. I think Seymour gonna get in. I don't know about anybody else, but I know Seymour should get in. But you got your boys like Vince Wilford who, you know, won't get in because he's a hall, hall of good. But, you know, he's been the Patriots the whole time. But I feel like I feel like his his name speaks more volume than – or like everybody remember him more than they remember Richard Seymour, which is crazy um, to me. But, you know, that's just something I want to point out. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting uh, two years for us Hall of Fame, man. Very, It's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, I think I think I got this – I think I got most of these right. Um, you know, you know, cause usually I always predict who who makes the Hall of Fame, and I got Chan Baylor, A. Reed, Tony Gonzalez, and I got Kevin Mawai, but I think I had another lineman going in over Ty Law, and it's probably probably wasn't smart because it's not a sexy, sexy position. So I know they want to get two old linemen in there, <laughs> not the same. And year. that's another reason why, not, and, that's, and that's another reason why the Hall of Fame sucks because uh, a skill position guys can always get a, a leg up oh, yeah, over, always. Uh, you know, over a, a guard or a center or something like that. Yeah, always. Um, but that's Preach Cat Preach. We're coming back with NFL Talk, uh, East Division, going through that. And also college football, man, is on the way back. Oh, yeah. Don't y'all forget to go stream that Drake Cat Pack. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we out. <laughs> go stream that. My side. <laughs>